It's time for baby and toddler instructions with host Blythe Lippman. Blythe is a nationally renowned infant and toddler expert who has over 30 years experience helping moms and dads regain their sanity, teaching them how to survive, and giving them the confidence they need to be the best parents ever. From sleeping, to crying, to potty training, to choosing a preschool, and so much more. If you're a parent, Baby and Toddler Instructions is the show you've been looking for. Now, here's your host, Life Lippman. Well, good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever part of the world you might be in. Thanks so much for tuning in to Baby and Toddler Instructions. I trust you're not all running around crazy getting ready for the holiday next week. I have to tell you, I've been to the post office, I've been to the UPS office, and there are more grumpy people around. I thought this is the season to be jolly, but I guess not. You know what? It's just people need to smile more. I have to tell you something. When you're out and about and you run into a grumpy person, I want you to try this. Say hello and smile. They kind of go, whoa, wait a minute. And I hope it brings back, you know, a positive perspective because it's supposed to be fun this time of year. But I can promise you the next hour will make you jolly. My guest, Dr. Linda Clever, she's the author of The Fatigue Prescription, is going to be talking about making this time of year meaningful in spite of all the chaos and so much more. We always have so much fun when Linda's on the show. Anyway, a few things before I welcome her. The weather, burr, it is 47 degrees here this morning, and I love it. Nothing better than putting on my warm sweater, hat, and gloves, and taking a walk really gets my blood flowing and the brain working. So I have to tell you, if you have little ones and they're cranky and you don't know what to do with them, you know what? Plop them in the stroller and just take a quick walk around the block. And if they're a little older, do a nature walk. Say, what do you see that's green? Or let's see how many Christmas lights we can find. Or just, you know, just a quick just a quick time to get the power back and to take yourself away. You will come back. You will feel so much better. And it doesn't have to be a three-mile hike, just something a little different. Anyway, that's my words of wisdom that has to do with getting your brain flowing. There were a couple recalls this week. One was the Dream On Me Incredible, it's called, let's see, Dream On Me, Play Yards. The Play Yard, this is terrible, the Play Yard rails can collapse, presenting a strangulation hazard to young children. So that's the Dream On Me company. Also, this morning, this just showed up. If you shop at Wegmans, if you're in a place that has the Wegmans food markets, and boy, they're great. I don't have, we don't have any in Arizona, but when I visit my mom, I love that store. Anyway, Wegmans recalled something called the Gift Gallery Woody Face Stress Ball, Moody Face Stress Balls. The rubber balls can break into pieces when they're squeezed. That's really good. You squeeze it, and and the part I guess it comes apart. And you know the kids put everything in their mouth. So I have to tell you, I'm ahead of the game this morning. Go to mybestparentingadvice.com or babyinstructions.com. I have put all the up to date recalls on my recall page. Check them out, and again, as I say every week, if you get a wonderful hand-me-down or if you shop at a second-hand store and they have great products, just check the recall list and make sure that they're safe. And let's see what else we have. Well, this week, I want to share three tips from my book called Help! My Toddler Came Without Instructions from the chapter called Surviving the Holidays with Your Toddler. So here's a couple tips that could make your life easier. Number one, if you are going to be attending a church service, a synagogue service, or any of those things, and you have a toddler and they've never been in this in this type of environment, see if you can't arrange a special meeting to go earlier. You know what? Let your toddler meet the pastor, the rabbi, go up on the pulpit, and just get a little familiar so they know. Show them where the seats are. Anyway, and you can take the time. It only takes a half hour. I know you're all busy. Also, if you're baking cookies, let your kids help. I mean, even a two-year-old can take a spoon and mix or let them put some sprinkles on top of the cookies or whatever you're making. Toddlers love to help. It's great for their self-esteem. And also, you're making wonderful memories and starting traditions that will last forever. And my third tip from my chapter is... 
if you are going to be taking those holiday pictures, try on the outfits before. Don't assume just because you bought it last month it's going to fit. Those toddlers grow like weeds. So check out my book, Help My Toddler Came Without Instructions. There's a lot more tips in the chapter, and I will share some more tips next week right before the holiday because there is a show on Christmas Eve day next Wednesday. Also, I wanted to tell you about another thing that I read. In the New York Times this week, there was an article about working moms. The U.S. was once a world leader in the woman's employment, but no more because there's a lack of family-friendly policies, and they may be taking its toll. You know, with the downturn of the economy, there's no more flexible hours. There's not so much working from home. In many other countries, some of the women have a year's maternity leave with either partial or full pay. And it's really, this article was a huge article in the New York Times on Sunday. If Go online and take a look at it. It's very scary because it's catch-22. What do you do? You need to pay your bills, but you need to, you know, what do you do with your children? And many of the families, especially the low-income families that talked about the fact that they put their children in daycare, but their check only pays the daycare. And you know what? There's other bills to pay. So what do you do? It's You know what? There's a lot of drawbacks. And who wants to put a six-week-old baby in daycare? Because I can tell you from experience, they get sick a lot. Not all of them, but you know what? Kids constantly have runny noses, especially this time of the year. And then again, you're stuck because you have to take time off from work to take care of those little sick babies. So You know, it's scary. I don't know what the answer is. I hope, you know, in the coming years, things change again, and it makes it easier for women. So that was a pretty interesting article. Also, I love this man. In the style section of the New York Times, Philip Galanis, he he has questions and answers, and it was free child care advice. I'm a new mom. I can't believe the audacity of strangers who go out of their way to tell me how to care for my son. I was at the grocery store when a woman told me I should put socks on my well-covered baby. My friends all run into this situation, and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. People love babies, and they love to give you advice. So Philip says, in the spirit of one-stop shopping, let me give you what you want. And two reasons not to go that way. The next time you're pelted with this advice, don't say, oh, my God, am I supposed to keep the baby warm? The next thing you'll tell me is that I meant to keep him safe from the feral dogs. The dentist busybody will take your point. But you know what? We all feel your pain, he says. Renee Budinskis are legions everywhere. And, you know, they're not necessarily meddling, but they were parents, and they just like to give advice. We all like to give advice. And I'm really happy because what Philip says is a sassy quip may leave a bitter taste in your mouth. And I I always tell my parents the same thing he says. You know what? Just say thanks. I'll keep it in mind because people are not coming from a bad place. They just want to tell you, you know, how to make it a little easier for you. And they don't realize they're kind of butting in and it depends what kind of mood they're in. Anyway, so I really wanted to share those two things this morning before I welcome Dr. Linda. And by the way, she is the author of The Fatigue Prescription. Dr. Linda Hawes-Clever, MD, is a specialist in internal medicine, occupational medicine, and she received both undergraduate and medical degrees from Stanford and further training at Stanford. Um, Her book is The Fatigue Prescription, Four Steps to Renewing Your Energy, Health, and Life, and she is also the founder and president of Renew, a fiscally sponsored project of community initiatives in San Francisco. Renew has helped is aimed at helping devoted people maintain and regain enthusiasm, effectiveness, and purpose as they navigate the challenges of work and life. She is a dedicated walker, enjoys good company, good conversation, and I know Dr. Linda likes cookies, which is why if you saw my video, I called it Cookies and Milk because, my goodness, she has the best recipes in the world, especially for chocolate chip cookies and brownies. I have made them a couple times, and Nothing better, especially this time of year, to take a break with some cookies and milk. So, Dr. Linda, welcome to the show. I'm so happy you could be here this morning. How are you? Terrific. And I'm smiling because uh, one of our um, favorite cousins this year um, 
sent cookies for Christmas. I mean, you know, that, as far as I'm concerned, she can take early retirement. I mean, <laughs> just the whole idea of, of having a stash of cookies uh, that I know are wonderful uh, and, you know, that I didn't have to bake. I mean, that's, it just doesn't get better than that, which um, I'm also smiling because um, I just love your advice and your alerts. I was thinking of, you know, Thomas Jefferson, I think, you know, said eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. I think with your uh, recall warnings, it's eternal vigilance is the price of parenthood, um, and it, or at least it's part of parenthood. And you just have to keep up not only with the alerts and the withdrawals and the you know, dr- interactions and, and so forth and so on, but then you have to pay attention to how your baby or your six or eight or ten year old is acting and you know what's changed and what's different and if something is different you, you really pay attention to it not to get neurotic about it but just to say you know this means something either uh, they're getting better at something or you know they're starting to um, limp or it, it, it also reminds me and, and I guess a, another uh, quality that, that you and I both enjoy um, is I am a mother and also a grandmother of, uh, as they are happy to say, four and three quarter year old uh, grand twins who are very, 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 very cute. And I was remembering, and this has to do with noticing and eternal vigilance and everything. But as you were talking, uh, one day um, our little grand grand boy, uh, this was when he was just starting to walk. I mean, he could walk, but he wasn't the, the surest walker. Started to limp. And um, and he was at daycare because our daughter works uh, full time. She's also a physician and and loves her work and loves her children. And so that's you make these arrangements. At any rate, um, so daycare immediately called our daughter and um, uh, said he started to limp. And Sarah immediately left work because you know there isn't anything good why a child limps. Um, and so, you know, called the pediatrician. The pediatrician said, "Take him to the emergency room." And so uh, she did. And they did what a, a good pediatrician. I think we all know this: nurse practitioner, et cetera, et cetera, uh, physician's assistant. The first thing they do is undress the baby, and um, a toddler. And uh, at the time, they undressed uh, our little grand boy, and uh, he had a crease in his sock. And so it was making just, you know, kind of a little blister. And so being a smart kid, he said, you know, I'm not going to walk on this thing. I'm going to limp. You know, I don't want to step on. And so they, you know, straightened out his sock, got him dressed, and, you know, off everybody went. But um, You know what? Hold your thought because we're breaking for a commercial. When we come back, we're going to talk about socks and blisters and limping. (laughs) I'm going to go have a sip of my coffee and my cookie. We'll be right back with more help. My baby came without instructions. It's Baby and Toddler Instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet. We'll be right back right after these. This is God in Country, the collision of faith and politics, hosted by nationally known speaker, Reverend Dr. Sean Michael Greener. Not your typical Rev. Dr. Sean is a proud military veteran, former law enforcement officer and founder of the internationally regarded Executive Protection Team. Dr. Sean holds a bachelor's degree in biblical counseling and master's and doctorate degrees in theology and is currently pursuing a doctorate in ministry with a Hebrew worldview focus. Through his counseling, elite life coaching, and national speaking, this ninja pastor tells it like it is. This series is biblically and politically engaged with the pedal to the metal. Join host and author of the acclaimed yet controversial book, Excellence Killed the Church, How Mediocrity is Destroying America, Dr. Sean Michael Greener, every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on this radio network. This is the Tokenet Radio Network, radio with a cutting edge. Are you ready to start rocking that woohoo 
that only you do? Because Lisa Stedman is on a mission. She will dare you, challenge you, enlighten you, provoke and empower you to bring out that inner woohoo. Lisa is an internationally acclaimed best-selling author. She is a breakup expert, a brand consultant, CEO of Woohoo Inc. and the Woohoo Radio Network. She will show you how to take your boohoo and turn it into woohoo. Get rebellious and get real. Get your dreams off the back burner. Get inspired and motivated to take action. Start rocking that woohoo that only you do in love, life, and business. She is going to be here for you every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Only here on the Woohoo Radio Network. Welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions with Bly Flipman on Toginet. The hour for all moms with little ones to come for great advice, encouragement, and great ideas for all new parents. Now, back to the show with Bly Flipman. Well, welcome back. I'm so happy you could tune in today, whether you're listening live or to a podcast. If you're listening live, call us, 877-864-4869. It is the season to be jolly. Call and say good morning. Anyway, before the break, I was talking to my wonderful guest, Dr. Linda Clever, the author of The Fatigue Prescription and the president of Renew, and we were talking about her little grandbaby when he was young and how he was limping, and they took him to the emergency room because his sock, they found out that his sock was bunched up and he was getting a blister. And you know what? I'm smiling at this story, Dr. Linda, because my son was the worst with his socks. It used to take 10 minutes to put his socks on. He would cry. He would say, this isn't right. You know how there's a line in the sock? I mean, I can remember this. And thinking about it, probably hurt his foot. And we always took the shoe off 50 times and fixed it. But, you know, you're making such a good point. You do need to pay attention even to the smallest things with your children. But how do you, as a physician, as a grandma, as a mother, how do you not go overboard and freak out and, you know, go running to the doctor all the time. How do you know when? Well, I think, uh, as you pointed out earlier, nothing is easy. I mean, the whole whole thing about uh, working versus time off and, you know, being with your child and, and versus earning money to pay the bills nothing if, if it were easy we we wouldn't probably be talking about it we'd be sitting having some milk and cookies uh or talking about it um i think that's one advantage of experience um it's also one advantage of having so, so you see uh you know a, a child having a temperature of 99 is not the same as a child having a temperature of 102 and so uh, and 102 matters uh, and 99, you watch. Um, and so um, I, I think that you learn by your own experience, and it's also the advantage of um, being linked to a next-door neighbor or to an aunt or to a mother or to a, uh, being in a mother's group or um, taking classes, the sort of thing of building your own knowledge base so you're not just at the the whim of, you know, uh, uh, somebody pulls a string and you jump. Um, and so I think I think that it's a combination of experience and um, uh, having sources of information. And, and frankly, um, I really do tend to say if you're worried about it and you're a pretty reasonable person, then do something about it um, because it's, it's much better to – intervene than to have regrets. Now, that's just how I personally am wired. I I can't stand if-onlys, you know, if only I had done that or if only I had called. And that's something that I have a hard time living with, and people are wired differently. Um, however, you're right. You can't, you know, you don't call 911 every time somebody sneezes. And so uh, it's a matter of having good sources of information and a level head. And, also, uh, you know, I'm sitting, I'm sitting here looking because in my office I have this little tablet of paper and it says life is all about having plan B. Mm-hmm. And that's that's part of it, having the backup if you can't leave work. I mean, working in 
preschools for many years, I know I've, I've called parents and said, you know what, your, your baby has a fever. And they'll say, well, I have a meeting in an hour. Can I come in three hours? And it's catch 22 because it's really tough. You know, the person doesn't want to miss their meeting because they don't want their job jeopardized. Yet you don't want, you know, the baby needs his or her mommy. And also you don't want to pass it around to the rest of the children or to the teachers. And it's really, it's a, it's a delicate balance. And uh, it really, it, it really is. And again, I would just add to that. Well, what can you do in the meantime? And there, there aren't good solutions. And and I wish, when my mother was was not feeling well, she said, you know, I just wish there were a little pink pill that I could take, and it would take all these, all this away. There isn't a pink pill. It's just something to have to keep on working. However, if you're working on, if you're at a daycare center. That's what hand washing is for. <laughs> That's what um, you know, alcohol um, or soap and water are for. And I wanted to say actually about the alcohol uh, concentration. It has to be 60 to 62 percent or more for it to be effective. And there are no data that um, quote natural end quote whatever natural means, and we know that we don't know what that means. Um, uh, Compounds really don't work in terms of stopping the spread of bacteria and viruses. And the, the alcohol compounds, the, the clear ones, if they're 60 to 62 percent alcohol, do work. So sometimes, uh, you know, you just want to have at home or in a daycare setting, you want to have soap and water and you want to have alcohol wipes or rinses and um, liquids around so that if somebody can't come right away, at least um, you're not spreading germs, you know, within any, you know, bacteria and viruses any more than they already have been, which they probably already have been. You know, um, that's, a, that's a good point. I mean, you, the health department will not let you use the hand sanitizers in the daycares here, I know. You have hmm. to use soap and water, but for the teachers, they can use it. I, I have a bottle of it in my car, and I am mm -hmm. glad you brought that up because mm -hmm. with the holidays coming, mm -hmm. don't be embarrassed if you're having like 20 people or if you're having just a few people at your house and you have a baby or a toddler, ask people to wash their hands when they come in. You don't know, you know if they've been to the store or they touched money or whatever they did. Don't ever be embarrassed, number one, to ask somebody to wash their hands when they come in your house. Also, I want to go back to another thing that we were talking about, taking the, the child to the physician. I, I used to joke with my pediatrician because my my daughter had terrible ear infections, and I used to say, I'm going to move my bed in because, you know, you can you can leave, and 10 minutes later, you know, they can see the ear infection. So I always tell my parents, don't ever be afraid to ask a question. Don't be afraid to call and even ask the nurse practitioner or whoever takes the triage and takes the phone calls. It's better. You'll rest easier if they can tell you whether to bring the child in or, you know what, we've seen this this week and just watch them till tomorrow. It's better to be safe than sorry. It's not it's the true. what ifs. Uh, absolutely. And I, I just wanted to go back to the, the hand sanitizer again. I, I must say, but this is part of because my training is in infectious diseases along with internal medicine and, and uh, you know, community medicine, occupational health, et cetera, is uh, when we have at our house or when we are, have anything to do with a uh, Christmas or Hanukkah or Eid or whatever kind of any gathering all year round, we've got bottles of this stuff right there with, a, you know, with the, the plunger dispenser uh, on the table. I mean, it doesn't have to do just with kids. It has to do with adults. That's how uh, that's how illness gets spread. So, uh, if we've got something that works and it's simple and it's cheap, uh, I'm in favor of that. So am I. I mean, you know, I put really a sprig am. of holly on it, or you know, maybe something that's not prickly, <laughs> and just put it on the table. What the heck? Yeah, you know what? That's a great idea. It could be a table table decoration. Exactly. Exactly. You know, a few a few you know silver. Uh, sprinkles in there, you got it. Just one other thing before, before we move on, and I, I think we've talked about this before, and again, I loved what you said about having uh, your kids any age um, helping with uh, Christmas cooking, n cookies or whatever, or holiday making, et cetera, um, as long as they don't do anything near the stove or the oven. One of the things that our daughter did, and I certainly wasn't smart enough, and I'm sure everybody in the world knows this, I just didn't, is to put a, a cotton tablecloth on the floor of the kitchen and have people do the stirring 
just sit right down, squat right down, and do the stirring right there. It doesn't matter if flour goes gluten free or not goes goes all over the kitchen. It's going to land on on the cotton tablecloth. And and I say cotton because it's not just having a plastic one that you wipe off. It's it's a cotton one that you know the eggshells and the sprinkles and the whatever get on, and you just bundle it up. And if you have a backyard, you shake it off into the backyard and make the birds happy, or you put it in the washing machine or you take it to the laundromat or whatever, you just fold it up. And plastic, you can't do that. Um, cotton is just, it's greener and um, and it's simpler. So I just wanted to add that into the, you know, the cookie making. That's project. a really good tip. I never did that either. I used to have my kids sit at the table and then you wipe the flour off and it goes on their booster seat and then it goes on them. And then <laughs> that's and it such- turns into glue. Yeah, it's such a great idea. Also, you know, you can go to the resale stores. They always have sh- have cotton sheets and cotton exactly. everything, you know, for 50 cents. It's not a big investment. And anytime, also, while we're talking about this, it's not just during the holidays. Kids love to help. I mean, I tell parents all the time, the weekend comes, let them help you make a special breakfast on Saturday. If you're going to have scrambled eggs, you know, let your toddler beat up the eggs. And, you know, it's great for their small motor coordination and it helps and they're so proud i mean look at a toddler's face when they say daddy i made the eggs or mommy i made the eggs it it is very exciting and maybe one more thing about the sheet idea that you just had um when our uh grand 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 twins i say that because they're so grand (laughs) um came for thanksgiving the library had a lego day and what they did Mm -hmm. is in in the greeting uh, one of the the meeting rooms they had probably six or eight full-sized sheets put on the floor, and they just dumped all the donated Legos in a variety of piles, and kids just dived in. You know, I thought, you could do that at a party. I mean, everybody's got Legos. And if you put it on a sheet, then that's just another thing. You just kind of, you know, pull up the corners, <laughs> put them back in the box, or just tie the, you know, sheet full of Legos and put it somewhere and you're ready for next time. And you're not going to go around and step on it in your bare foot um, because it's all in the sheet. So just a thought that, that we'd seen very well. Wow. You know what? Wouldn't that be a fun birthday party, a Lego birthday party? Not mm-hmm. a lot of mess. And the kids love to do it. And you can have a contest. And mm-hmm. there's so much you can do. So I say everybody should have the extra sheet or yep. that you can put on the floor. And you know what? We did forget one thing. You can always have a picnic when your children are bored or your toddlers are bored. Have a picnic. Sit on the floor. Give them their little sandwich and their sippy cup and have a special picnic lunch or a picnic dinner, whatever you want to do. So many uses. Well, we're going to break for another commercial already. I can't <laughs> believe this is going so fast. When we come back, I want to talk to Dr. Linda about moms and running around during the holidays and is it meaningful versus busy? Or are we just thinking and not doing? There's so many things to talk about. We will be right back to baby and toddler instructions. We'll be right back with more help. For help, my baby came without instructions. It's Baby and Toddler Instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet. We'll be right back right after these. If you could live your life truly standing in a place of peace, joy, and abundance, wouldn't that make your heart soar? Now you can with lessons in joyful living. With your host, Kimberly Rinaldi, Mondays at noon central. Kimberly Rinaldi, having created a highly successful coaching practice, now teaches lessons in joyful living. She believes in empowering others and that through it, you have the ability to break through any and all barriers, thus allowing you to reach your greatest potential and joyfully step into your life's purpose. What used to take weeks, months, or even years, she can now teach you in a matter of hours with her programs. For more on Kim and her show, go to her website, KimberlyRinaldi.com. That's R-I-N-A-L-D-I.com. Then join us for Lessons in Joyful Living with your host, Kimberly Rinaldi. This is the Toginet Radio Network, broadcasting quality programming to the world. Shh, listen. Something is brewing. The beautiful business evolution is coming. The way we do business is about to change for the better forever. This is real business at its very best. 
on Beautiful Business Radio, you will learn what it means to truly prosper, how to nourish yourself and your business, how to earn what you deserve and make a difference in the world. The tide is rising. The change is here. Discover a new way to live, love, and partner with yourself and your business on Philippa Rollins Presents Beautiful Business Radio where you matter and your business thrives every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, only here on the WooHoo Radio Network. Welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions with Bly Flipman on Toginet. The hour for all moms with little ones to come for great advice, encouragement, and great ideas for all new parents. Now, back to the show with Blythe Lippman. Well, welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions. I'm here with my wonderful guest, Dr. Linda Clever, the author of The Fatigue Prescription, which we could sure use this time of the year, and the president of Renew, which she'll tell us about in a bit. And I want to talk about... The holidays, you know what, as I said in the beginning of the show, people are so grumpy. We're supposed to be enjoying. Tis the season to be jolly. I don't know. Nobody's jolly lately. I mean, in the parking lots, it's crazy. On the on the roads, people are in a hurry. And I, I don't know. Lin, Dr. Linda, you've got to help because there's <laughs> so much to do. And, you know, but is there so much to do? I mean, how do we plan it? You know, we talk about thinking versus doing. What's really important? And how do we not get so fatigued besides stopping for a milk and cookie break? You you really have put your your finger on the the kind of the, the downside of the holidays in a way is how we get into such a frenzy. And and I, I also did want to say how, how much I liked your suggestion of if you kind of pick out a particularly grumpy looking person and give them a smile and a, and a hello. It really is astonishing, first of all, what it does for them and what it does for you. Uh, cause it also, um, it, we, we really know that when, when you greet and when you smile, um, it does something to both of your brains. I mean, your brains light up in the pleasure section. And so th- this is worth doing. And you know, not everybody's going to smile back. Uh, it's, However, uh, you know, every time you throw a rock in a pool, it doesn't make a tidal wave. You know, you just you just kind of keep on ex- 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 expecting it or exploring it or trying it out and, and to see what, what happens. Um, I uh, was in Washington recently, and it was really cold, and I happened to go to a, have a wonderful opportunity to go to a pop-up holiday um, mall that was just made out of tents and, and some bright lights. And and I got um, a fleece fabric hat, and uh, which is going to be warm, which is what I wanted. It did. I must admit, has uh, has some personality to it. And um, I walked in the meeting actually that I was going to be chair chairing the meeting, and everybody kind of fell down laughing. And um, that was worth it right there. I didn't know I was quite that funny, um, <laughs> but it, uh, you might also, uh, you know, get put on your funny hat and. Uh, cheer up a whole lot of people. The thing about um, this time of year and, and so many, it, it's actually around the world, uh, in, in, well, in the northern hemispheres at any rate, or wherever it is going to be winter, then it's opposite northern and southern hemispheres. All of the cultures, all of the um, faith traditions and so forth have something to do about light uh, this time of year. And so uh, when we think about Hanukkah, which is which just started, and Eid, and so forth, and so on, and so forth, all of these things, uh, Kwanzaa, light is an important part because we're really kind of trying to chase the doldrums that the outdoors brings. We need the rain, goodness knows. We, And since I'm in California, I cannot tell you, uh, except for electricity being out, and there are some people who are having bad floods, and I just hate that, however... Uh, the flip side is we're possibly going to be filling some reservoirs. And, I mean, there are towns in, in California that have no water. You turn on the faucet and nothing comes out. Oh. So so we're, in it, at any rate, but we have winter to cope with, and light is a good idea. Well, another part of all these, these faith traditions is some time for thought and some time for 
remembering. And that's what um, seems to be so, so terrifically important um, during this time. It's, it's part of these traditions, the light and the thought, uh, for a reason, uh, to have some, some time to reflect, which is part of the whole how do you avoid fatigue. First is, or treat fatigue, first is awareness and then reflection. You think about it, and then you talk about it, conversation, and then you plan and act. Um, but one of the things to be thinking about is how good is it that I'm so busy? You know, what is this really accomplishing? What's it doing to my temper? Uh, what's it really doing to how much work I get done? Um, because sometimes we get so busy that, that it's, we're just in a swirl. We're not actually getting anything done. We just flit like a fruit fly. Um, and, and sometimes busyness, you know, is, is bragging rights. And sometimes, sometimes any time of year, it can be a way to stay numb. Uh, there are things that you don't want to think about and it could be, it could be grief and it could be problems. And if you just be busy, busy, busy all the time, you never have to, but you never get to think about those matters and may never resolve them. And so the purpose of busy may be to have fun and it may be to get things accomplished, but it also can be a cry for help or it can be almost like a drug. And so one of the things to think about is why am I so busy and am I spending my time in the way that really adds to the situation or is it is is it kind of bruising me or you know sucking me down instead of lifting me up? That's something to think about. But you have to give yourself the permission to stop and think about it, which is okay. I mean, it's you know it's it's interesting to me because I was in Target yesterday, and I have to say, I was a little grumpy, and I and I. Stop for a minute. Went, what the heck am I so grumpy about? Look at the the lights are pretty and the music's playing and you know, and I we celebrate Hanukkah and it was the first night of Hanukkah and I thought you know this is not a time to be grumpy and I was tired because I was overworked. Whatever it is, I'm just human like everybody else, even as a radio host. And it's funny because I was watching, I was really watching the people. I was at the toy department. They had. So many toys in their carts, and it got me to thinking about how do we get back what the holidays are really about, about creating the traditions and about creating the memories. And, yes, you know what? The kids love the toys, and I, you know, I always loved, even when I was a little girl, I loved looking at all the toys, but how many things do you actually need? And I'm going to go off on another whole tangent on something else because part of it is, you know, we do have all the working parents and sometimes parents kind of go overboard because they do feel guilty because they're not spending the time with their children and they have to go to work. So it's really a catch-22. Well, it's it's interesting. And, and, and again, and the reason you picked this this topic is maybe to give – people who are listening and then the people who are listening can talk to some other people in their family and their friends and their neighbors about this whole thing about thinking and taking the time to think maybe when you're waking up in the morning or maybe when you're in the shower instead of just the to-do list because there's nothing wrong with doing things but we've got to have a to think about list uh, maybe when commuting you know Instead of listening to the news, which is, you know, whoa, that news, whoa, um, instead of that, or maybe instead of even listening to music, just turn off something so you can think. Because actually last Christmas I was um, uh, actually chairing another meeting, and I asked people about their most memorable Christmas gifts. And one woman said, you know, I loved board games. Now you can tell that she was older, but nonetheless, um, but not old, not that old. She was maybe in their 30s, maybe her late 20s. And there are lots of board games. Around. Anyway, she said, I loved board games. And my parents gave me board games. 
and they never played with me. Oh. So the board games just kind of piled up in their brand new boxes in the closet. And I tell you, it really kind of it brought tears to my eyes. It did. And another person said, I kept asking for a train and asking for a train. Every year I asked for a train. And he said, I never got it. And it reminded me of a time when our daughter was growing up and she really, really, really wanted a Barbie doll. And I really, really, really had socioeconomic, uh, gender, political, <laughs> you know, many objections um, <laughs> and uh, whatever, um, times gone by. And I was just not was good, not going to do it. I'm just not going. I just was not going to compromise. You know, I was just not going to do it. <laughs> and my best friend Gail said, "Linda, get her a Barbie doll. Just get her. It doesn't. You don't have to get, you know, forty five thousand accoutrements. I mean, you don't have to get all of the, the everything. Every get her a Barbie doll and you know two outfits. And so." I did, and I tell you, it is not easy on Christmas Eve to find a Barbie doll in two outfits. But my friend was really smart, and I pr- appreciated her smartness. I did. And our daughter got it, played with it, and did just put it aside because it didn't do what she needed. But she needed, you know. And so this is one of those thinking things of think about if you're going to get a present for them, are you going to play with them? Or are you going to arrange for somebody to play with them? Or if they really, really, now I'm not saying, you know, if they want a pony, a live pony, well, you can't do that. But maybe take them for a ride on a pony. I mean, what can you do? These are just sweet little hearts that don't know that we've got our problems. Um, how do, that's something to think about of what is, is, what are the holidays all about in terms of resisting the frenzy of filling that shopping cart and Maybe instead figuring out some time to play with them. Maybe that's what they want. That's such a good tip because that is what they want. You know what? When when children are having a tantrum, when toddlers have tantrums, it's because they need something from you. You know what? We all want our parents, and especially when they're little, there's nothing better than that that one-to-one time with, with each of your children. And I can remember, you know, getting all these gifts and you're, I'm sitting here trying to think, what was my favorite gift I, be, I ever got for Hanukkah or mm-hmm. Christmas? And you reminded me, I loved my Barbie dolls, but mm-hmm. I, had a, I had a best friend. We didn't have the dream house, and we didn't have the car. And we, you know what, we didn't have any of that stuff. But I had my best girlfriend, Kathy, and she had her Barbie dolls. And I, it's funny, I still have that plastic case. And the best part of it is that we would, you know, make up the stories and... Mm-hmm. and play with the dolls and it was having somebody to play with so mm-hmm. we're having a break we will be right back so hang in there and we'll have some more holiday talk we'll be right back with more help my baby came without instructions it's baby and toddler instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet. We'll be right back right after these. If you're ready for a big change in your work, your career, your happiness, your life, it's time for the Million Dollar Mindset with Marla Tabaka. Monday afternoons at 2, 1 central on Toginet.com. Marla believes that with the right mindset, anything is possible. Join us as successful life coach Marla Tabaka inspires you and her clients to explore, discover, and live your dreams by developing what she calls the million-dollar mindset. Marla will inspire you to take action on your dreams and reveal secrets to success that will help you realize your own unique power. Tune into the million-dollar mindset for heartwarming stories with Marla Tabaka. Learn tips and tricks to building a successful business and unlock the secrets to creating a happier, more balanced life through abundant thinking and attraction power. For more information on the Million Dollar Mindset, go to our website, MarlaTabaka.com. That's M-A-R-L-A-T-A-B-A-K-A.com. It's the Million Dollar Mindset with Marla Tabaka. Monday afternoons at 2, 1 p.m. Central on Toginet.com. Reaching out from the heartland of the United States with quality programming, this is Toginet Radio. 
Secret Cuisines and Sacred Rituals is a quest, a place, and a feast. Join host Vilasi Venkatachalam every week to explore myths, mystique, old medicine, and brilliant modern solutions through a dazzling kaleidoscope of cuisines, cultures, and cures. This is the place where tribes gather, strangers and familiars, to be memory keepers and makers of our evolving, enduring, evergreen, spoken legacy of wisdom and ingenuity. In Velocity's words, when we do old things in new ways and new things in old ways, we paint with an inspired palette, weave our own healing traditions, and become our own guru. Velocity is a troubadour of secret cuisines and sacred rituals. She collects stories of wisdom, ingenuity, and grit. She believes wellness and transformation happen when you stand at the threshold of delight and discovery. She displays her hidden penchant for drama when she leads the safari at the supper club. Her favorite pastime is to extol the marvels of cuisines, cultures, and cures. To her audience in workplaces, seminars, and salons, her mantra is, be your own guru. She is a biochemist, botanist, and alchemist who likes to churn delightful, useful things from a brew of art and science, ancient and evolving, old medicine and new cures. Join Velocity every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, only here on the WooHoo Radio Network. Welcome back to Baby and Toddler Instructions with Blythe Lipman on Toginet, the hour for all moms with little ones to come for great advice, encouragement, and great ideas for all new parents. Now, back to the show with Blythe Lipman. Well, welcome back. I'm here with my wonderful guest, Dr. Linda Clever, the author of The P Fatigue Prescription, Something We Need Now, and the president of Renew. And we were talking about our favorite Christmas gifts and how it's so important to take the time to play with your children with whatever gifts you give them. So don't pick something that has like 50 pieces that you have to put together if you're not going to have the time to do something with them. And, you know, with the little babies... They like the ribbon, and they like the box and the paper just as well as the presents, so you don't have to go overboard. Anyway, that's just my opinion. So, Dr. Linda, we are up to our last quarter, and I don't want to miss you telling my listeners about Renew. We have a lot more time to talk about other things, but why don't you tell my listeners about Renew? Well, thanks. It is, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a not-for-profit, and there is a website, www.renewnow, all one word, renewnow.org, and the whole idea is how can people stay at the top of their game? And um, we all want to do well, live well, whatever, whether we're working for money or not working. My, my view is that everybody works all the time. It's just they don't, may not get paid for it. Um, and that changing anybody's diaper, no matter what the age of the person whose diaper is being changed, is not particularly pleasant. Um, and the person obviously could be six months old or the person could be, 80 years old, and there are people who do that for their relatives and their loved ones and their friends, too. So, so there are lots of different ways to work. And, and, and the, when you know how to spend your time and when you know what your values are, then you can get the kind of rest you need for your soul and the kind of rest you need for your body, and you can take care of yourself. And the whole idea, again, is if you're okay – Everybody in your life is more likely to be okay than if you're not okay. If you're not okay, that's kind of uh, grayness or trouble that rains down on, on everyone in your life, whether it's work for money or work uh, in your family or community. So the, the whole idea is that you really do matter and that it is not selfish to take care of yourself. Uh, it, it's self-preservation so you can do what you want to do and what you need to do. And um, and so this ranges from your body. Make sure you get the flu shots. And there, you know, there is information that this year's flu shot, the immunizations, uh, may not as be effective as we hope. But they're a lot more effective than nothing. And it also is back to what we talked about. If you you need to be alert. If you or somebody else is getting sick and you have a fever of you know 101 and is going up, get some care right away because the flu is no joke. And this also means. Uh, that you, you know, need to get your, your physical examination and your breast checked or your blood pressure checked or your, your vision checked for glaucoma, um, uh, which is particularly um, 
common uh, in African American uh, groups and so forth and so on. So, so we're talking about health in the biggest sense, health so that you can be boisterous and fun, and um, and you know get through the day with with grace and dignity. And so that's what Renew is about. We again we talk a lot about values. We talk a lot. As you and I have talked about, how do you say yes and no? Um, mainly more no's than yeses sometimes because we want to please people and we want to fix things and we want to even control things, and that's how you get overburdened. So we need to often learn how to say no more often, and that's important. So, so it's, it's, a, it's about one's learning. It's about one's body. It's about one's energy, about one's... Um, soul and relationships, and that's what Renew, that's what we do. So I want to tell my listeners again, go to RenewNow.org. It's great. They have something called the renew meter and you can actually take this test and see where you are. And I do, I have to share this perfect segue to share this right now. I am a big advocate of power naps. Uh-huh. I have to tell you, when I feel myself saying, you know what, I am just really dragging and I've had I'm not I've had enough water to drink which is another thing we all get dehydrated and and a lot of us don't drink enough water and I just have kind of had it I take my 20 minute power nap I have never had to set an alarm in my entire life I wake up in 20 minutes I'm lucky enough that way because I hear a lot of people say oh I can't take a nap I'm so tired and it makes me groggy 20 minutes whether you set an alarm or not I'll tell you what sometimes it makes the world look like a better place you have so much more energy to go on and again like dr linda said it's not selfish to take care of yourself the other 15 things will still be there when you wake up or you know whatever works for you to just kind of take a breath and 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 sit for a few minutes it's true and at the end of the day and let's say it's because there's a holiday party or there's something they are not going to notice if you are 20 minutes late i mean they're not going to notice and so um, I happen to have the same gift, which is um, 20 minute uh, is completely refreshing. Not talking about an hour and not talking about two hours, just talking about um, a short nap is, is a wonderful thing. And I know our, our time is short. I, I wanted to say just two other gifts that you can give to yourself for this holiday. Um, one is this, we've been talking about the gift of thinking. And the gift of thinking and you know, how are you going to play with your children, how are you going to deal with maybe a, an uncomfortable situation wherever you're working, how plan things out. Um, but another gift of the thinking is you can imagine. Imagine things that haven't happened yet. And your imagination doesn't turn on until you have just a little bit of quiet time. And which you can give yourself um, on the way home. You can sit on a bench. You can park in a safe place for 10 minutes. And uh, the, the gift of thinking so to open up your imagination about some good things ahead. So that's just one thing to mention. We can talk more if we have the time. The no, we other, do have the time. Okay. The other thing is, is give this another gift for yourself. Give up on expectations. I uh, One of the kind of mind-changing, life-changing gifts I was given, and this was in a psychology course at the University of Buffalo, and I can actually remember just sitting there, and it, it just hit me, is expectations cannot be right because they haven't happened yet. And so if you expect that there uh, won't be any spilled milk at the party <laughs> or you, if you expect everything is going to go smoothly or if you expect that, you know, Aunt Tilly is going to fly off the hook again, whatever, it can't be true because it hasn't happened yet. And so give up. That It's kind of a way to give up on perfection and give up on what, what's the most best way an event can turn out you just say you know i'm gonna do the best i can i'm gonna have life plan b or c or d i was just about down to plan g in this one particular project (laughs) um but but it kind of lets your pores open 
to uh, letting go on some of the, the perfection, hard driving, uh, it's got to be this way or that way, because it can't be right because it hasn't happened yet. Um, you know what? So- I love this. I, I love it because it takes a lot of the stress off of you, and it gives more time for flexibility. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, and that it's, um, it's you know, there, there's this whole Buddhist part of our lives when we get really wise, which is uh, you, you let it go and let it happen. And the, the natural um, sequence of things is things disappear and change, or change and disappear. And that's okay. I mean, just look at the leaves fall or the snow melts or the, this is just nature. Um, and so the flexibility helps us kind of be part of that and not um, not just rigid expectors with, you know, with a kind of a, a ruler to tap somebody's knuckles on if they do something wrong. So you know what? The message of today is the holidays are going to be here next week. Be flexible. Enjoy your time. Take your power naps. Stop and think. And Unfortunately, we're at the end of the show. We're getting to the end, so I'm going to have to say goodbye to Dr. Linda Clever, the author of The Fatigue Prescription. Everybody should have that book. And go to the site, renewnow.org, and take take the, uh, what's it called, the meter? Renew-o-meter. Yep. Renew-o-meter test. Dr. Yep. Linda, thank you so much for being on the show again. You have a wonderful holiday. I, your information will be on my website, as always, and I can't wait to have you on the show again and enjoy those little grandbabies and make sure their socks are okay, even though they're older. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, and, and we'll all hope and do bright lights and smiles, and I really thank you for what you do, Perfect. Bryce. Perfect. Thank Thanks. you so much. Have a great holiday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, next week, December 24th, there will be a live show. My guest will be the wonderful Jonathan Sorrell. What a great time to sit down for an hour, grab some cookies, a cup of coffee or tea, and regroup as you're going to listen to Jonathan's amazing story about adoption just in time for the holidays. So I hope you can join us. I know it's a busy time of year. If you can't, the podcasts are always on my website, My Best Parenting Advice. Dot com, babyinstructions.com, toginet.com. Go to like me on Facebook, Twitter. I'm on Google+, Plus, Pinterest, and listen to all our other great shows on Toginet. And check out, again, mybestparentingadvice.com. All kinds of experts, and I add new things all the time. So I'd like to leave you today with a little bit of humor. Cleaning with the kids in the house is like brushing your teeth while eating Oreos. And you know you're a mom if you find yourself hiding behind the cupboard door, stuffing your face with chocolate so your kids can't see you, and then you offer them some organic rice cakes. Well, isn't that the truth if you're a mom? So thanks for tuning in. I want to wish those of you that celebrate Hanukkah a happy Hanukkah. I know we're doing our potato latkes the end of the week. It's Tonight is the second night. Enjoy being with your children, lighting the candles. I will talk to you next week with some Christmas messages and Jonathan Sorrell. You know what? Don't forget to stop and breathe in the excitement of the holidays. You know what? Remember, it's not so much about the presents. It's about family and friends, no matter what you celebrate. So see you next time. Bye-bye.